Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. For those of you I haven't had a chance to meet yet, uh, my name is Phyllis Jones. I do have the title of canon. My husband likes to refer to me as the loose canon. Uh, he's not entirely incorrect. Um, and uh, I work as the uh, chief financial officer for the Diocese of New Jersey. That is my ministry, and that's how I look at it. Um, and it's really my blessing uh, as part of that job to have the opportunity to come around to all of the different congregations uh, within the Diocese of New Jersey uh, at one point or another and have a chance to get to know people better um, and really get a, a good feel for the life and the vitality and the vibrancy of all of our congregations. So. I really do very much appreciate the invitation to be here today um, and we look forward to sharing this, what really is the culmination of the new Consecration Sunday, um, the new stewardship program uh, that's being uh, tried this year in this church. And um, for some of you who may have had either limited exposure or maybe even no exposure to what that's been all about. We've spent the last four weeks or so listening to, you know, stories of thanksgiving and gratitude from some of the members of the congregation when they share their own feelings of mission and ministry with you and the things that they're thankful about for the community here at St. Luke's in McCutcheon. Um, and so carrying those things with us forward into this, you know, this culmination Sunday and hopefully having the chance to reflect through that time and through some of the things we're about to talk about um, as, as to how that impacts your life um, and the, the gratitude that you have for your ability to express your faith and your ministry through this community. Um, we hope to really just bring um, our, our stewardship season uh, to a very exciting close. And not to be forgotten, uh, there's food. <laughs> uh, a lot of you hopefully have you know, signed up to come to the celebration luncheon afterwards. Um, where we all gather together and just celebrate the stewardship season and have a chance to just be together with each other um, and celebrate this Sunday and everything that's led up to it and really moving off into the next year. So please don't forget about that. Um, that'll happen right after the service is over. Um, the other thing that's a little bit different from what you might be used to is that, again, we will have this commitment time today where um, we will have estimate of giving cards that are passed out at what's called commitment time in your bulletin. Um, happens not long after the, the piece. Um, and so that will be a time again where there will be some you know, reflective music as the cards are being handed out so that you can take some time. It's not a race. You don't get points for finishing first. Um, so just to take some time to think about what you've heard, what you've seen, what, how that's made you feel and how it's resonated with you, um, and go ahead and complete the card. Uh, what we'll do is we'll take this table and we'll have it kind of out here a little bit more towards the middle with this basket. And then as you, if you feel so moved um, to complete the card and return it into this basket, this basket will then be taken to the, uh, to the altar with the offertory and offered in thanksgiving for, for um, anyone who cares to do that today. Just want to emphasize, this is an invitation. It's not a requirement. It's not an expectation. And especially if you happen to be with us for the first time today, um, just take the, the opportunity to enjoy this as part of your own maybe personal reflection on the meaning of your faith in your life. Um, and enjoy it as part of what we do here in offering all of ourselves to God. So having said that, I think we'll go ahead and um, invite the children. As is that time, come on. <laughs> <coughs> Come on. Come
of this thing that we call stewardship. Has anybody here heard of stewardship before? Have you heard the word? How about out in the peanut gallery? Anybody ever heard the word stewardship? <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> anybody want to take a stab at what it means? For the benefit of our group up here? Wonderful. Any more? hit on the points, you know, that, that <coughs> the biggest ones that I would bring out. So God, right from the very beginning, called all of us to be stewards of his creation. He gave us the whole world and everything in it to take care of. And so then what we did is he had a promise, a covenant with us, right from the very beginning, about how we were supposed to take care of his creation. And then what happened over time is that we broke promises. And every time we would break a promise, um, God would come back and he would call us back to that covenant. <coughs> Anybody remember Noah and the ark? That was all about a broken promise, right? Men had broken their promises, so God said, I'm sending a flood. I'm done. Okay, I'm going to send a flood, and I'm going to wipe all of humankind except Noah's family and all of those animals off the face of the earth. And then after the flood receded, and Noah and his family came out of the ark, what happened? Anybody remember what was in the sky? A rainbow. <coughs> and a rainbow was a promise from God that he was never, ever going to do that again. So then as time went on and we went on breaking more promises, then, you know, God said, what do I do now? You know, how do I deal with all this? And in that intervening time period, we heard today a story about a prophet. Does anybody know what a prophet is? A prophet is a person, actually. So a prophet is a, is a guy, like, you remember seeing the, the, the guys with the long hair and the beards and the, you know, the canes and all? That's kind of how they're pictured a lot of times. But the job of a prophet is to be a storyteller. And the job of a prophet sometimes is to have to tell some stories that maybe people don't really want to hear. Because maybe it's kind of calling people to account for some things that maybe they shouldn't have been doing. And it's being honest sometimes in ways that even if people, even if it doesn't make you popular, that you still have to say. And so Isaiah was one of those kind of prophets. And he lived at a time when he needed to tell the people of the nation of Israel about some of the things that they were doing that needed fixing. And so one of the things that Isaiah talked about was this person that we heard about in our gospel lesson today. His name was John the Baptist. Have you guys heard about John the Baptist before? <laughs> and uh, so John the Baptist also was a prophet. Okay, but John lived about, I want to say, maybe 800 years after Isaiah did. So how could Isaiah possibly know that John was going to come along? Only by the Spirit of God. And so Isaiah talked to his people about the coming of John, and then also that John would be the person who would talk to them about the coming of Jesus. And so we see in all of our lessons today, when they talk about Isaiah, 800 years before the coming of John and before the coming of Jesus, talking about that. And then we see John come along and he's talking about the coming of Jesus after him and how Jesus is going to be so much greater than he is and that he's going to baptize people by water. Kind of like we'll, use, we'll see that a little bit later on. We'll see baptism by water. And he says, I'm going to baptize you with water but Jesus will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And so all of these things are a sign of the things that go on. It's like a cleansing. Like when you wash with water, you get clean, whether you like it or not, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that outward cleansing is a sign of what's supposed to go on inside of us when we recommit ourselves to God. And that's exactly what you're going to hear people talk about today when you hear our baptism. That commitment. And that's what us, that's us giving ourselves, committing ourselves back to God in the kind of way of stewardship that God always originally intended for us to have. Stewardship is about 
us giving our lives. John the Baptist literally gave his life to God. So this is a way for us to think about how can we give our lives, not just our money, but ourselves, everything that we have and the gifts that we have to God. I bet you guys have some gifts in money. What do you think your gifts are? Is it a good thing? Yeah, you're a very good reader, also. Thank you. Who's a good usher? Usher is good at ringing the bell. (laughs) Anybody else? Anybody good at sports? Yeah, I think I have a few of those. So all of these things, these are gifts that you have, and don't forget to remember. Always remember that these are gifts that God gave you. And so for us to be really fulfilled, a lot of times what that means is giving those things back to God. Because he gave it to us in the first place. So when we talk about that kind of stewardship, I'm going to pass it on to the for you guys. Maybe you can say, I'm going to keep one for myself. Start one from over here and then down that way. You can pass them around to each other. What I brought with me today was some good ways for us to kind of remember what it means in the baptismal covenant. And I'm hoping everybody who's in the pews got these sheets when we came in. If not, there may be some more in the back. And these are some handy ways that we came up with to remind ourselves about how God called all of us to be stewards of his creation. And these are things that are found in the baptismal covenant. You'll hear some of this language. Okay, again, in a very short period of time. So I want you to think about this when you hear this language again. And maybe even take these things home and put them up on your refrigerator. So you can remember as you go about your life, whether you're going to school, whether you're going to work, whatever you might happen to be doing, that in each and every step of our day, God is calling us to be good stewards of everything he's given us. So again, we have these handy little pictures. The first one is a megaphone, and that one is all about telling. And telling means in the baptismal covenant, you're going to hear the language proclaimed by word and example. So that just doesn't mean talking about it, that means doing it. The good news of God in Christ. And in what we call our five marks of mission, which we have um, developed as the Anglican Communion to help us how we think we should be acting in the world to reflect God and to reflect Jesus Christ, the first mark of mission is proclaim the good news of the kingdom. So you can see how that's really close together, right? The second one is teach. In the baptismal covenant, that sounds like this. Continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers. A lot of that's what's going on here today. And in our second mark of mission, it specifically says, teach, baptize, and nurture new believers. Number three is treasure. In the baptismal covenant, that looks like seek and serve Christ in all persons. That means every single person that you look at, you look for Jesus in that person because he's there. Sometimes he's a little harder to find than others, but he's always there. Loving your neighbor as yourself. And that means all people, everybody. Even some people who you might think are a little bit harder to get to know, or maybe it's a little awkward, maybe they aren't the most popular people, especially when they're not the most popular people. Those are the people you need to seek and serve and love. So in the five marks of mission, mark number three is respond to human need by loving and serving. Number four is transform, and in the baptismal covenant, we say that we will strive for justice and peace among all people, and respect the dignity of every human being, every human being. And the fourth mark of mission really calls all of us as Christians to seek to transform unjust structures of society. And then last but not least, we have ten. In the baptismal covenant, we say that we'll persevere in resisting evil, and whenever we fall into sin, that we will repent, we'll say we're sorry, and we'll return to the Lord. And that 
fifth mark of mission calls upon us to, stri to strive to safeguard the integrity of creation and to sustain and renew the life of that are expressed here in pictures and in words to help us remember how God calls all of us to use the resources that came from him to start with and give back from those resources to a world that is ever, ever more complicated and complex and really in need of it. So I'm hoping that you can take these home and think about them a little bit, maybe think about them a little bit later when we're going through our commitment time. How are we called to do the best that we can to be able to resource this kind of a mission and resource it in a way that we do it, that we do, that things happen here at St. Luke's in the Tuscan to the faith community here. So I'm going to end with a little bit of a prayer that comes from our lesson, one of our lessons today. Um, it's one of my favorite parts of the lesson. It's one of my favorite prayers because it says so much what I really hope, what Paul hopes for the Romans and what I hope for all of you. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in 